Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. Super excited to show you guys this product today. This is the Reliabat 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Now what sets this apart from most other batteries on the market is this has built-in heaters, so you can actually use this down to negative 20 degrees Celsius. Now, how that works is basically when you put a charging voltage on this battery, it first heats up the internal heating pads, raises the battery to a good operating temperature, and then it can charge it up. Now, if you remember, most lithium iron phosphate batteries will get permanent damage if they're charged below freezing. So this is one of the only batteries that has the ability to be used in cold temperatures all the time. Now there are actually a lot of great use cases for a battery like this. For example, if you have an RV or a camper and you're sick of replacing your lead acid battery and just not getting great performance, you can upgrade to a battery like this and get many more life cycles. This is rated at 4,000 life cycles and you'll still have 80% of the capacity remaining and you can actually use it in low temperatures. So if you're camping or going on trips in the winter, you won't worry about damaging your battery. Now, if you do overlanding or camping and you're looking for just a solid portable battery, this would work great in a setup like that. Or if you have a small cabin or an off-grid shed and you want to build a large system, this battery actually supports parallel and series connections so you can build a much larger battery. Now, another great feature to this battery is you can actually connect to it with your smartphone using their app. So if you have the iPhone app or the Android app, you just connect with Bluetooth and you can see the current state of charge. You can see the power going in and out. You can also see the current temperature of the inside of the battery and also individual cell voltages. Now with all these features, you can actually pick this up on Reliabat's website on sale right now for $599. Well, now that I've talked about the basic features for this battery, now I like to test it out. So let's go ahead and charge it all the way up. We'll do a full discharge test to see if we can get rated capacity. We'll then throw it in a freezer for 24 hours and see if we can charge it. And then we'll see if it can handle 100 amps output. Hopefully you guys are excited for the testing. Let's jump into it. Okay, so the first test that I wanna run on this battery is to make sure we can pull advertised capacity. This is rated at 1280 watt hours or 100 amp hours. So I have it fully charged up. I have an inline shunt here on the negative line, which is gonna track all the power going out of the battery. And then I have my Xantrex ProWatt 2000 plugged in. Now I have a 0.2C load or a 250 watt load on this. We're gonna take it all the way down until it shuts off and see if we can get rated capacity. Okay guys, I just started the test. You can see it's counting up the milliamp hours here and we're pulling around 250 watts, tracking the watt hours at the bottom. There's also an elapsed time down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and set a time lapse on this shunt here so we can see everything that's happening. We're aiming for a hundred amp hours or around 1280 watt hours. Okay guys, pretty impressive. The test ran for five hours and 13 minutes. We pulled a total of 102 amp hours or about 1.3 kilowatt hours and the battery's sitting at 11.6 volts. So we did pull advertised capacity. Let's go ahead and check out the Bluetooth app. Now when I pull up the Bluetooth app, you can see the capacity sitting at 0% and the battery voltage is right at 11.66 volts. Zero power is coming through it. And at the bottom there, you can see the temp is 26 degrees Celsius. Now this battery is designed to be used in low temperature climates and that has to deal with charging this battery below freezing. So the next test I wanna do is throw this in the freezer we're gonna let it sit in there until the Bluetooth app shows it's below freezing, and then we'll try charging it up to see if the internal heaters work. Many hours later. Okay guys, the battery's been in the freezer for about 24 hours. You can see that it's showing negative 19 degrees C, and the status is in a protect mode, so it's not going to let it charge. It'll actually turn on the heaters before it charges. So that's what I wanna do is test that. So let's go ahead and take it out of the freezer and see what happens. Okay, so I just took it out of the freezer, hooked up my battery charger, I set it to 14.6 volts and 20 amps, and it's actually uh, just charging at four amps right now. So I actually think it's turning on the internal heaters. Let's see if we see anything on the app of the battery. Okay, so looking at the app, just after a few minutes of plugging it in, you can see it's already at negative 15 degrees Celsius before it was at negative 19. So the heaters are in fact working. You can still see it's in a status of protect, so it's not gonna charge the battery until it's above zero degrees. So I'm guessing maybe 20 to 30 more minutes and it'll be at zero degrees. Pretty interesting, guys. I've never seen a battery like this. This is pretty neat. Okay, guys, it's been going for about 45 minutes now. 
Um, the battery's sitting at four degrees Celsius. So in the owner's manual, it says this will turn on at five degrees Celsius. And on the top, it's getting a little bit warm. So it's definitely heating up inside. Uh, let's go ahead and just keep an eye on this and it should start charging much quicker once it gets to five degrees Celsius. Okay guys, it just hit five degrees and the charger turned on. Now I tried to get it with the camera, but I missed it by like two seconds. So you can see we're charging at 15.4 amps. So let's go ahead and turn it up, see if it can handle 30 amps charging. Well, if my charger's set to 30 amps, it seems to be working just fine. Uh, it's been going for a couple minutes, no issues. I'll go ahead and continue to charge up the battery until it's full, and then we'll do some other testing on the battery. Now this has been charging for about an hour now, and I just realized I printed off the spec sheet, and this says that it can max charge at 100 amps, or uh, max recommended charging at 50 amps. So we've been testing at 30, Let's go ahead and turn this up to see if we can get to 50. This charger will max out at 60 amps, um, but we might hit 14.6 uh, before this hits 50 amps. Let's see here. Okay, 50 amps. I'll go ahead and let this run for just a minute here and see if we have any issues. A little longer than a few minutes later. Okay, so we basically just finished charging up the battery. You can see on the app, it's at 100% and it handled the 50 amp charging limit just fine. Did that for about five minutes, and then I cut it down to 30 amps to finish out the charge. So uh, now what I wanna do that this is full, I wanna go ahead and do some discharge testing on this. Now this is rated at 100 amps continuous, so let's go ahead and see if it can handle 100 amp output. And then we'll also try maybe running a, a larger load just to see if the BMS will uh, shut off automatically if you pull too much power. So let's jump into some discharge tests. Okay, so I've started the first discharge test. Now I'm running it through my inverter. I have a 1500 watt heater running on low mode, which you can see it's pulling around 700 watts or 55 amps. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in some additional power to see if we can get this to 100 amps. Okay guys, I hooked up a bigger load. It's been going for almost 15 minutes. See we're pulling 97.4 amps or right around 1220 watts. So a ton of power coming through the battery. I'm pretty happy with the performance. Uh, my inverter fan turned on, but everything looks to be really good. It's really hard to get right up next to that 100 amp limit. But uh, what I'm going to do now is just go ahead and put the heater on high. It's going to pull a ton of power, and I want to see what happens to the BMS, just see if it shuts off or whatever. So I'll leave the camera running. Just go ahead and listen for some beeps in the background and watch the screen. Okay, 170 amps, guys. There it goes. Okay, that beeping was actually my inverter. The battery doesn't beep at all. But after pulling 170 amps, yes, this is gonna turn off. But hey, just in case you pull too much power, it's gonna save the battery. The BMS will shut off the power to the battery. And in about uh, a minute or two, this will actually turn back on. Okay, so there you have it. You can see that the BMS turned back on just within two minutes or so. And uh, there's the discharge testing. So we were able to handle 100 amps output, didn't see any issues, and everything looked good with the battery. Okay guys, well, pretty impressive results. Uh, it basically works exactly as advertised. We were able to get a little bit over 100 amp hours, which was great. We were able to have it in the freezer and then the heating pads actually heated it up and then it charged at five degrees Celsius, which was pretty cool. I've never seen a battery do that before. And then the last thing was we were able to pull 100 amps without any issues, and we surged it up to 170 amps, and then it shut off because it was being overloaded. So everything seems to work just fine on this battery. Now, speaking of some of the basic specifications and features for this battery, this is 25 pounds, which is way less weight than an actual AGM battery, and it's a size group 24. Now there are two handles on the top that flip up like this to make it easy to carry around. I like how they fold back down and they're out of the way. There are actually two M8 screws on the top that are epoxied in. I don't see any issues pulling 100 amps through these at all. Now when you go to connect the Bluetooth app, you usually have a huge list of Bluetooth devices. You can actually have a trick here. The serial number on the top is the Bluetooth device that's inside this. So when you open the app and search for a device, use the uh, number here on the top. Now I'll include this dimensions for this battery on the screen. The entire thing is made of plastic. It seems very durable. Now the whole top is sealed on in one piece. So I don't have any worries about using this in a marine use scenario. 
Now, if you're interested to see how the heating pads work and how everything's set up inside, there's another channel on YouTube that goes by the name of Lithium Solar, and he actually had one of these. He did a complete teardown video, and when he tore it down, he didn't see any major issues. I think there was one minor thing about having a lead uh, on top of the other, but other than that, everything checked out really good. So if you wanna see that video, I'll include it down in the video description so you guys can check out the teardown for this battery. Okay guys, well, we're coming to the end of the video. It's always good to see a product behave as advertised. So I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that have a use case for a battery like this. Basically a battery that you want to have a ton of life cycles and get really good capacity at low temperatures. So if someone is in the market for a low temperature designed lithium iron phosphate battery, of course you're gonna be paying a little bit extra you can go out and buy really cheap batteries on Amazon, but they're not gonna have the built-in heaters, and most of them don't even have low temperature charging protection in the first place. And you get the extra perk of Bluetooth in this. So what do you guys think about this battery? Throw a comment down below on how you would use this, or if you're someone that was just super excited to find out that you could have a battery with built-in heaters. Thank you guys so much for watching. Super exciting to test out products like this. This is pretty awesome to have a product that just stands out from all the others. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.